All right, everyone, it's time for a response to the March for Our Lives thing, which it's not a march for your lives, it's a march to end the Second Amendment. That's exactly what it is, absolutely. It's just like the Cloud Act that just passed that none of you are protesting, that, that abolishes the Fourth Amendment. And with corporations taking over basically all human communication and now censoring everything, we basically don't have a First Amendment. So now you're trying to take the Second Amendment away. The funny thing is, I don't see anyone going after the Tenth. Could it be because the states, the states resisting federal control are all sanctuary states? You know, it's probably. But here's some thoughts on it. The first thought is that these people don't know what they're talking about. Violent crime in this country is at a 50-year low. That includes gun crime. That's their first. They don't understand crime statistics, so that's problem number one. Problem two is they're constantly talking about assault weapons, but civilians already can't own them. You do realize there's like a there's a thousand dollar licensing fee to own an actual assault weapon in the United States. It's not no oh, a cursory background check, a straw sale or something. No, 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 no. The AR-15 that you are so worried about is not an assault weapon. It's a sporting rifle. So number two, you're ignorant on guns. Number three, a lot of the people that are showing up for these things, they don't even really care about the issue. They're opportunists that want to get they want to get on TV. They're bored. They wanted to skip school. They don't really care about the gun control argument. I guarantee you some tens of thousands of people at that march fall into that category. A second significant category is moral busybodies, people who don't want liberty. They want other people to be abused because it's just a masochistic tendency that they happen to have. And there are people like this. You've probably met some of them. The sort of people that snoop around in your trash to find out what your life is like. They're just, they just can't mind their own goddamn fucking business. They're just unpleasant individuals. Number three are jackboot lickers, people who like authoritarianism because they're, I don't know, they're just totally out there. And number four are delusional people, and this is most of them. Most of the people at this march simply don't know what's going on. Again, they're ignorant on guns. They don't know anything about them. They don't understand that the history of gun control in the U.S. starts with Jim Crow. It literally, no, gun control in the United States, I hate to break it to you, begins with a bunch of Southern Democrats saying, oh, shit, the Civil War is over. The slaves have been freed. Hmm. What do citizens get to do? Now that these black people are citizens, these former slaves, oh, shit, they can own guns. Oh, we got to stop that. They made the argument that <laughs> deep Southerners... You know, the KKK people made the argument in, in the Supreme Court, hey, right to bear arms, it's not an individual, right? It's a right to have a state militia. You know, if, for people to have firearms, that's a privilege for people to own them individually. And it was accepted at the time because the people on the court were a bunch of, again, pragmatic Southern KKK lovers. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a perfectly sane argument. It wasn't reversed until the last couple of decades. In the last two decades, Violent crime in this country has plummeted. It, its peak was in the 90s, which coincides, by the way, with Clinton's assault rifle ban. So around the time that that lapses and goes out of favor and, and you have McDonald versus Chicago and Heller versus DC and stuff, violent crime is really low. It's been falling continuously for 20 years now almost. And, so, and despite the fact that there are far more guns in the country, there's less gun control in the country, and yet crime rate is so much lower per capita and even almost as an absolute number in some accounts. How can this be? I credit the rise of the internet, of course. Again, people who they, they might have problems, uh, they can get help more easily now. They can find other people that are like them to calm them down, basically. You can debate extremists online. You know, YouTube and Twitter and some of these sites are trying to prevent that from happening. People get put into limited state just for mocking racism at this point. Big problem. But if you want to march for your lives, I suggest that you march to, re to remove more gun control. Maybe we should try that since obviously uh, uh, less gun control uh, coincides with a drop in crime. It may not be uh, correlated uh, in a strict sense, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's obviously there's no correlation between less gun control and more crime. We can already uh, defeat that argument with the last 20 years of FBI statistics. So uh, you're, you're wrong. And also you're marching to remove people's constitutional rights. Don't say it's for your life. It's not going to save any lives. The proposals you're making wouldn't stop any of these shootings because people who are lunatics or criminals probably aren't going to listen to your gun control rules. Oh, you have to be 21 to buy a weapon. Okay. So it will have absolutely no impact on gun crime. Okay. Point taken. It's also unconstitutional. It's going to get fired on by the courts and you know you can make it constitutional you want to know how constitutional amendment to raise the voting age to 21. see how popular that concept is because it's the only way you're going to justify that ban on people who are adults owning firearms it's not going to work dude uh expanded background checks okay 
Try and get Ted the farmer, the 80-year-old man, to uh, obey that rule. Try to get straw purchases to stop or sales across state lines. There's no way to enforce it, so good fucking luck. Background checks for mental illness? Okay. Well, then people who want to own firearms and have mild forms of mental illness now won't go and get checked up at the psychiatrist's office. They'll, they're not gonna they're not gonna refill their prescription. No, I don't want to be in a database. I want to be able to defend myself. You'll have a lot more people committing. You're gonna cause crime with that particular provision. Bump stock ban has nothing to do with the Parkland shooting. You're talking about Las Vegas. That's the only time, as far as I know, that one was even used in one of these shootings. It doesn't make any sense to deploy one in that situation. Most of you have never fired a gun, so you you don't even know what you're talking about, and you're arguing against the Constitution. Look. To be a liberal, in the strictest sense, I, I can remember when liberals uh, used to argue against expanding the government's rights because the government tended to be abusive. They're like, oh, look at the Iraq War. You know, W is basically you know Satan, and the Iraq War is, is like people are dying overseas. And Obama continues that, and Trump's been continuing it. Look, all three administrations selling stuff to Saudi Arabia. By the way, an, a, a non-democratic, monarchic, theocratic society in which being homosexual can get you killed uh, that then uses those weapons to kill you many children. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Trump. Thank you, Obama. Thank you, W. Thank you, Clinton. Thank you, every fucking president for the last half century. What a wonderful time. You're, you're going to tell me that those people should be telling me what kind of weapon I can and can't own? So in other words, Obama can give automatic weapons, actual assault weapons to the Sinaloa cartel, thousands of weapons. Uh, then accidentally they, you know, fast and furious, Holder accidentally loses them. Oops, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. Oh yeah, they killed one of the border guards with a weapon that we gave them, you know, for free. <laughs> what a wonderful time. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to give literally machine guns to literal criminals in another country, but my fellow citizens can't be trusted with a magazine that holds more than 10 bullets or an actual semi-automatic sporting rifle, like that's actually a weapon of war, you find me one fucking military in the world that uses that particular variant of the AR-15. There is none, because it'd be useless as a weapon of war. The only way it's even a, a check on tyranny by having the Second Amendment at this point at all is because of sheer manpower. The fact that there are, you know, a couple hundred more times law-abiding gun owners than there are US soldiers, and that's, that's the only reason. By the way, in a martial law breakdown scenario, a lot of those soldiers probably would refuse to follow orders. They'd probably be fighting with the citizens. You know, that's how, that's how tyranny would die very quickly because we have a well-armed populace. People put out these things, they say, oh, it only takes like 10 minutes to buy a gun in the US. In Germany, it takes a month. F why do I care about Germany? Yes, they've got such a good track record when it comes to gun violence. Why the fuck do I, do I care about German gun laws? It has nothing to do with the United States. Globalist fools. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with me. We've got a, we've actually got a, a second amendment. They don't. There's the difference. Unreasonable uh, impunity towards the second amendment shouldn't be tolerated. And I, uh, what I really find funny is when groups, you know, politicians that typically they're like, oh, you know, from my cold dead hands, they're not saying much about this march because they're worried about being called pro baby killing or something. Uh, and then uh, some of the Christians, the, the, the religious right. Uh, they really uh, fuck up their own arguments because they always say, well, all these people are like pro-abortion and they like, they, they like killing babies, just not, you know, children in school. That argument really falls flat and it really it falls flat with people like me who are 100% pro-gun. There's a good chance that I'm more pro-gun than you because I want to eliminate most uh, existing gun control as well. I don't really care if people have machine guns. I, I honestly don't care because my fellow citizens largely are not violent morons. Yeah, essentially, when you're saying that we need more limits on the Second Amendment, what you're saying is that a large enough proportion of your fellow citizens are nuts and criminals, that you, and, the, and you're one of the nuts because you think that they'll actually obey it if they are violent. They're not going to obey it. Most of the gun crime in this country is related to suicide, accidental discharge, or gang violence. It has nothing to do with lunatics at all. It has to do with someone blew their head off. You do realize that most of those school shootings that they tally up, there's a goal, there's been 14 since the year began. No, there have been two, actually. Most of them were single actor incidents without anyone, several of them were suicides that happened to be on school grounds. <laughs> and one of them didn't even involve anyone in the school. They were just on the grounds and I guess killed themselves. Uh, suicide or attempted, accidental discharge. There was uh, another one, I guess, where a person was shooting near a school and so the report came in and that's for some reason tallied up and then single actor incidents 
So it's not it's not exactly what you think of when you think of mass shooting. You know, you're going to need more than one or two people to actually be shot to call it a legit mass shooting. People are conflating the two in their minds. Now, I don't think that there should be any school shootings, but the thing is, the suggestions they're making won't work. They will simply make it harder for other law-abiding individuals like myself to exercise their Second Amendment rights, and it's a right, not a privilege. The Supreme Court has already weighed in on this. The states are bound to it, too. It's not a privilege, it's a right. It, it is individuals who have the right to bear arms, not a state militia. The militia is taken for granted. You don't need a constitutional protection to be able to have a military. That doesn't make any sense, dude. It's literally referring to private militias, individuals who bear arms who are capable of mustering in a scenario where they need to muster, as in get together or, or act alone in defense of themselves, their family, their nation, their property, whatever. Uh, that's why. By the way, if you want to have a less effective U.S. military, the best way to do that is ensure that the civilian population is largely ignorant about firearms. You know, one thing that's consistently saved our ass before is the fact that because everyone had guns anyway, you know, a lot of them hunted, uh, they did do, you know, militia stuff. Back in the 50s with um, the Civil Defense Force, uh, militia behavior was quite common. It was quite common for totally normal, rational, sane, liberal human beings to have fallout shelters, you know, because they realized the concept of preparing for things. You know, the hope is, here's the thing, the hope is for peace. But because you can't always ensure peace, you have to take steps in order to, you know, it's, it's like the hope is your house doesn't burn down. But why wouldn't she have a fire extinguisher? It's not, you're not planning for it to burn down. You're being prepared in case it does catch a blaze. You figure, well, at the very least, I can, you know, blast my way through the flames and I can get out. I won't die and save my cat or something. You know, for me, it'd be harder because there are multiple cats. So it's like, I'm going to have to carry them like <laughs> they're chugs of wine or something. It's going to be difficult. My hope is that the house never catches on fire, but I'm damn well going to have a fucking fire extinguisher. My hope is that no one ever tries to burglarize here. My hope is that no one disgruntled by my YouTube video shows up with duct tape and a butcher's knife. But if that happens, I'm damn well going to have a firearm and I'm going to try to blow their head off. Absolutely, because I'm going to defend myself, my life, my liberty, and my property, my pursuit of happiness. Absolutely I am, and I'm going to be unrepentant about that fact, but the thing is, I'm also a law-abiding citizen. I, I Trust me, I take great pains to abide by the law, you know, because I know I'm involved in, in political stuff, so, you know, there might be, like, government agencies, some some agent in some intel agency doesn't like me, so I'm, trust me, I'm not claiming a dollar more on my fucking taxes as a deduction than I'm legally entitled to claim. I don't want the trouble, because, you know, if they audit Trump all the time, they, you know, they might be the uh, audit Trump fans more. You look at Lois Lerner with the IRS. I'm law-abiding, and I have the Second Amendment right to uh, defend myself. Yeah, that involves sporting rifles. There's no really, there's no difference between the civilian AR-15 and any other sporting rifle. It's just it looks more military-like because it's vague, it's cosmetically similar to a military rifle. That doesn't make it a military weapon. These people's proposals are dumb. Many of the people involved are are opportunistic, uh, or the, or the, <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. They're just uh, ignorant of the uh, you know gun control starting with Jim Crow. Gun rights being used to defend the innocent. I think that it's the great equalizer. Yes, I take up that line exactly. Guns are a great equalizer. You know, someone who's, you know, 150, you know, some some small female individual walking in a dark alley, all of a sudden, 400 pound Bubba comes up behind her uh, and she can wheel around with her Sunday night special. Yes, absolutely, I want her to be able to kill the, the would-be robber or the would-be rapist or something. She has an abusive ex-boyfriend. Uh, you know, so when he bangs on the door at 1 a.m. with a baseball bat, I want her to have a firearm. Absolutely. Absolutely she should. She should be able to defend herself. By the way, it's not a racial thing. You know, their glorious leader there uh, is complaining about uh, clear backpacks violating the First Amendment while trying to violate everyone's Second Amendment rights. Uh, it has nothing to do with the First Amendment. You're in a school. It's all, By the way, it's already a gun-free zone. So why don't you just why don't you just show up with an assault backpack, you know, one that's not clear, and uh, you know, be told uh, what the hell are you doing? You know, you obviously want to see dead children because you have a uh, the wrong backpack. It's crazy talk. Yeah, criminals don't follow the law. Imagine that. Yeah, gu yeah, gun control. Yeah, drug control works so well. You know, we've tried that for a thousand years, and it doesn't seem to have helped. All it does is make more addicts. It's sort of like prohibition. By the way, law-abiding gun owners. Uh, in states that are trying to violate the Second Amendment, if someone is charged uh, with some sort of offense related to the nonviolent 
uh, activities that they are being charged with. Like, oh, they had the wrong magazines. And so we're getting we disorderly conduct because, you know, you wouldn't let us in immediately when we came to confiscate your rifle or whatever. You should use jury nullification. By the way, don't tell anyone you know what jury nullification is. Just Google it uh, and then don't tell anybody. Otherwise, you can't use it. Like, I, I'll never serve on a jury. If I get summoned to one, I legally speaking, I'm going to have to tell them, hey, <laughs> I'm quite public about the fact that I know of this and I support the use of this. Uh, but if nobody knows that you know, then it's all good. Yeah, exactly. And you can exonerate someone for something in, w in which the law itself is unconstitutional. Citizens may make that determination through jury process. Absolutely. That's about all. Peace out.